Hello and welcome to a very short discussion on the histology of the lymphoid organs. We we're going to look at the lymph node, the spleen, the thymus, and as well as mouth, particularly the tonsils. Right. So to begin with, I'm going to describe something known as a lymphoid nodule. A lymphoid nodule is simply a concretion of lymphocytes. And remember, you have a primary lymphoid nodule and a secondary lymphoid nodule. The primary lymphoid nodule is basically a concretion of small uh, lymphocytes, uh, which is going to be directly staining throughout, whereas a secondary lymphoid nodule will have a lightly stained region uh, at the center known as the germinal center, where you have lymphocytes that have been uh, exposed to antigen. And at the periphery, you have a directly staining region of the small lymph lymphocytes is going to be the coronal layer or the mantle layer. Right. And in the lymphoid organs, in certain regions, you find these lymphoid nodules, and in certain regions, you also lick lymphoid nodules. They're going to be an in encapsulated, and um, they're found mostly uh, in some uh, systems like the GI tract, the respiratory tract, and the lamina propria, and the submucosa. Right. So to begin with, we have the lymph node, which basically is um, uh, going to have a thick capsule. This lymph node is a cortex, a paracortex, and a medulla. Other texts would describe the lymph node to have a cortex and a medulla only, and the cortex would be divided into two. There is a superficial cortex, also known as a nodular cortex, because it's rich in lymphoid nodules. Then there is the deep cortex, which lacks the nodules. Then you have the medulla, of course. The lymph nodes are going to be bean-shaped, or any form shaped, or kidney-shaped, if you may want and they have a convex surface and a concave hilum. The convex surface, that's where you find the afferent lymphatic vessel. Uh, the afferent lymphatic vessel enters at the convex surface, whereas the efferent lymphatic vessel exits at the hilum or the concave surface. These lymph nodes are involved in filtration of lymph, and you have about, about 450 of them in the body. Right? And they're almost about one millimeter uh, in size, and you can see them um, in most cases by the eye. Right. So the superficial nodular cortex, you find um, the subcapsular sinus where the lymph from the afferent lymphatic vessel enters, and that uh, subcapsular sinus leads into a cortical sinus, which then leads to the medullary sinus within the medulla. I'll show you the pictures when we get to the slides. The cortex, like I said, that contains lymphoid nodules, which are going to be rich in B cells as well as T upper cells, uh, plus or minus the germinal center within the lymphoid nodule. Right. And the paracortex, like I said, or the deep cortex, it's unnodular or it lacks the lymphoid nodules, and it has T cells rather. And the medulla will have medullary sinuses, it has medullary cords, which have T and B cells, and the lymph nodes will filter for antigens and show the presence of infection and malignancy uh, by swelling. For example, there's the classic so left supraclavicular lymph node, also known as facials node, which is going to enlarge in stomach malignancies or testicular cancers. Right. Then if you look at the spleen, the spleen is the largest single accumulation of lymphoid tissue in the body. And unlike uh, the lymph node, which had a cortex in the medulla, the spleen will have a white pulp and a red pulp. The red pulp makes up 80% of the spleen, whereas the white pulp will make up 20%. The red pulp will be composed of splenic cords of puroth, as well as splenic sinusoids, which are basically going to be discontinuous capillaries. If you haven't watched the video on the circulatory system histology, please do. Right. Then the white pulp contains a central arterial, which is surrounded by pows, which we will call the periarterial lymphoid sheets. Those periarterial lymphoid sheets are going to be made up mainly of T cells, plus or minus uh, some plasma cells. And you find lymphoid nodules or lymphoid follicles. They're also called lymphoid follicles um, or splenic follicles if you're referring to the spleen. You find those lymphoid nodules present only in the white pulp. Right. The capsule of the spleen is quite thick. It's made up of smooth muscle and uh, connective tissue. And that capsule sends trabecular within the spleen, right? And within the trabecular, you have arteries, 
you expect to find veins and you expect to find lymphatics, you expect to find nerves, right? Then the spleen only has an efferent lymphatic vessel so that leaves it without an afferent, right? And it removes effete or old drained blood cells uh, from the circulation via its open circulation. So the spleen will have an open circulation and a closed circulation. The open circulation is whereby the blood in the red pulp from the trabecular artery to the central arterial, the penicill arterial, then it goes into the splenic cords of Beeroth. It needs to find its way back into the sinusoid uh, by passing through spaces between specialized cells known as staph cells. By that way, we remove all red blood cells because they will no longer be flexible and they won't be able to pass through uh, the small spaces between the staph cells. That's how you remove the old red blood cells, right? Then the thymus is um, going to be characterized by cortex and the medulla. There's an outer darkly stained cortex with a lighter inner medulla, and it's involved in central tolerance. Remember the thymus uh, reaches its maximum size in puberty after which it starts to involute. It's a bilobed organ found in the superior mediastinum, anterior to the great vessels, and some part of it extends into the anterior mediastinum of the inferior mediastinum, where you're going to find it anterior to the heart, right? And within the cortex, you have positive selection where you select uh, the T cells that are simply going to be able to express MHC or bind MHC. Then the medulla is negative selection where we remove those that are now able to bind self proteins, right? The medulla of the thymus is characterized by having Hassel's corpuscles, right? And you don't find lymphoid nodules within the thymus. And there are no afferent lymphatic vessels also entering the thymus and with few uh, efferent lymph vessels, right? If you look at the mouth, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, then the pair pages, which I described with uh, the GI tract histology, if you haven't watched the video, there are tonsils, which I've also described with the oral cavity histology, if you haven't watched the video. There are palatine tonsils, there are lingual tonsils, and there are the pharyngeal tonsils. The three tonsils will have stratified squamous epithelium, except for the pharyngeal tonsil, where the epithelium is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, basically the respiratory epithelium, if you haven't watched the video on the respiratory histology. The palatine tonsils will have 10 to 20 deep crypts, with a capsule, right? Whereas the, the lingual tonsil will have crypts, but it lacks a capsule. If you look at the pharyngeal tonsil, it um, it has a capsule, but it actually lacks um, the crypts, right? Then uh, looking now at the drawings, the drawings that you expect to find uh, or the slides that you expect to see, this right here, this is a palatine tonsil, right? This is going to be the epithelium on the outside. That's stratified squamous epithelium on the outside there, right? So this is going to be stratified squamous epithelium, right? This is its center, that's its submucosa. These are lymphoid nodules. That's a lymphoid nodule. That's a germinal center right over there. That's a lymphoid nodule. That's a lymphoid nodule. Right. And then the center there, those are germinal centers that are lightly stained, right? Then all these, those are epithelial cells. That's epithelial, those are epithelial cells. This is high magnification, right? These, that's all epithelial cells. That's the higher magnification, right? Then you can appreciate that um, this region here, the lymphoid nodule, that is simply now going to be a uh, magnification of the tissue, right? Then this here is a lymph, a lymph node, right? This is going to be the capsule. Remember I said they have a thick capsule. Those, this is the superficial, the nodular cortex, where you have lymphoid nodules. Right? So those are lymphoid nodules right over there. This is trabecular being sent inward from the capsule. That's another trabecular right there. That's trabecular again. Right. And this is the medulla. The spaces there are the medullary sinuses. Then these are the medullary cords. Right. 
that's a high endothelial venue, right? That's a high endothelial venue. Um, this here is showing a lymphoid nodule. This is the outer region. That's the corona layer of the mantle layer. At the center right there, that's the germinal center, right? That's another high endothelial venue, right? Quite characteristic um, within the lymphoid, uh, within the lymph nodes rather, right? That's another picture showing the lymph node, right here, right? That's a venue. This is a capillary, one so thick. Right. Then <coughs> within this region, those are medullary sinuses. Those are the medullary cords. Come here. That's a vein. These are valves. So that shows that this is actually a lymphatic, right? That's an artery. So that's another lymphatic with valves. Those are valves right there. Then on this one, that's a lymphoid nodule, right? So that's a lymphoid nodule. Then those are reticular. Uh, reticular cells quite hard to distinguish from fibroblasts, right? Then this right here is splenic tissue. That's a lymphoid nodule, right? That's a lymphoid nodule right there, right? That's another lymphoid nodule right there, and that's um, a germinal center right over there. That's a central arterial, right? Then this year is showing the red pulp within the spleen, right? And on the side, this is trabeculae. That's trabeculae, right? Then this is red pulp. Red pulp, remember, say they're the splenic sinusoids. Then you have the splenic cords of Buroth, right? This year is the white pulp. This is a lymphoid nodule. That's a central arterial. This is the, the mantle layer of the corona layer. Then at the center, there, the lightly stained region. That's the germinal center. Right. Then all this would be red pulp on the outside. Remember, red pulp makes up 80% of the spleen. Right. And this is the germinal center, of course. And that marginal swan on the outside. Right. Your mantle layer or your corona layer, whichever way you want to call it. Right. Then this is thymic tissue. This is the medulla, which is lightly stained. That's the cortex, which is darkly stained. And notice there are no lymphoid nodules there. Right. This is high magnification, showing you this is the medulla where there's the Hassel's corpuscle there. The Hassel's corpuscle can now be seen here. That's the Hassel's corpuscle. And all these, the epithelial cells. That's another Hassel's corpuscle right over there. Right. That's a blood vessel right over there. Right. Then this is a thymic lobule. So you divide uh, your thymus into lobules. Each lobule will have a cortex, which is this one, then a medulla, that one, which is lightly stained. Right. That's just about it. Thank you for watching.